All right, so we're gonna go to we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna go as far as the as the suite goes in this direction, and then we're gonna go back to the main part of the suite. So the space that we're entering now um, used to be a clean room. We completely reconfigured it. We can work with live cells in here. This is biosafety level two compatible space. We're also set up to do a cell culture if we need to. Mostly it's people keeping their cells alive so they can use this instrumentation. A couple of incubators in here, biosafety hood, refrigerator, and then this is the uh, this is like SP8. Uh, we don't see it right now, but it has an Oco Labs incubator on it, so that you can hook that up to uh, CO2, and you have a very small incubator about the size of a cigarette pack. You can keep your cells alive. So then this next room, we're just going to buzz through it really quick. This is where we're set up to do uh, Forster Resonant Energy Transfer Imaging. It's also set up for TURP, Total Internal Reflectance Fluorescence. And we have a super brilliant light microscopist, spectroscopist who built this. So this is set up with uh, lasers. Really does a beautiful job doing TURP. You know, and TURP is one of the super resolution uh, microscopy deals where you get about 200 nanometers of super resolution imaging. So it's used for looking at um, membranes and things that are really close to the cell membrane just through a super thin uh, cover slip. The space we're in now um, was built for a guy who wants to do two photon, multi photon on live rats. What we did is we made we made a, built a soundproof room in here. When we have two photon, multi photon on a microscope, then you have to be a lot more careful. So it has a great big enclosure around it and you're supposed to keep everything closed while you're imaging. This is a Bruker system. This also is set up for uh, electrophysiology. Now we're gonna go into the micro CT area. Here in this space, we have a, um, if we look over this way, you have a, a CT lab one, 130 instrument. In this one, the sample is static. Other, in every other one of these systems, the sample moves. This is a Rigaku system. This is a, a Rigaku, Rigaku Nano 3DX system. This one gets, uh, I think about 170 nanometer resolution. So really, pretty good resolution, but when we give you these great resolution numbers, uh, it's tricky to get something like that. So we just can roll out these numbers, but it's not always as easy as it sounds. We have an X-Radio Micro CT system. You can look at insects, you can look at bone. This one is also another X-Radio system. And we have set this up various ways. So we've made different kind of modifications so that you can look at things in liquids. We have people who work with plants. And what happens is if you cut a leaf open, it's going to bleed out. So it's set up so that we'll put that piece of a leaf inside a straw and seal it up and do that kind of work. This is really a pretty nice micro CT setup. We're going to go to the main part of the suite. This is the wet lab, and we have uh, oxygen plasma cleaner, glow discharge for TEM, two sputter coaters for SEM. It's always good to have two sputter coaters in case you break one. We have a dual metal evaporator back here so that we can coat, uh, uh, like you can put chromium on something and without breaking the uh, vacuum then you can coat with something else so that it's, it's just you put about 10 or 12 angstroms of chromium on something and then you put your other stuff on it and it actually seals better it's kind of a lot of work for something fairly simple and then the wet lab is available to lots of people this is just a regular fluorescence microscope so this is a zeiss then if we switch gears completely we have a brand new uh transmission electron microscope. So this is a, 
a scanning transmission electron microscope, an STEM. It's a refurbished system, 4K by 4K cameras. It does high angle annular dark field imaging. And that's a really kind of a cool thing where you can get a sort of elemental analysis out of it. Because it's a STEM, because it's an STEM, you can control the beam. If you can control the beam, then you can also do EDS. So and down the road, I'll be able to do elemental analysis using the STEM system. And then here, this is another noisy room just to peek into. This is high pressure freezing and freeze substitution for uh, transmission electron microscopy. So when we're working with bio samples, which is what we do a lot, be able to freeze the sample so fast that the hydrogens don't have time to swing around and we have our samples in vitreous ice, so in glassy ice. And so what do you do after that? <laughs> so this is what you do when you do cryo microscopy. When you do cryo EM, you're freezing samples in vitreous ice. We're taking samples that are a little bit larger, like nematodes and stuff like that, using them in vitreous ice, and then taking about six or seven days to run them through a freeze substitution process where we can embed them in uh, plastic from going from being frozen in ice to embedded in plastic. But the, uh, the substructure, the ultrastructure is preserved all the way through. This is uh, atomic force microscopy. This is just straight up AFM. And then we also have this thing that looks like a pizza oven in here is a stylus profilometer. And the stylus profilometer is kind of like an AFM, except it has much better amplitude. So for example, you can put a coin in there and you can see the, uh, the surface of the coin where if you're doing AFM, there's no way you'd be able to see that depth. So this is a 10 cent uh, Euro coin from 2006, I think. Really pretty. And then we have over here, this room is set up, this is a stereology workstation. We were counting slide after slide after slide, cell after cell after cell of brain after brain. And so they're looking at phthalates, uh, exposure to phthalates, exposure to bisphenol A, bisphenol S, all these different kinds of things. It gets used a lot. So we're really actually sort of lucky we're not interrupting someone right now. This other microscope in here is a, uh, one of our few upright microscopes. It has a really big stage on it. And this one has dark field optics. And we also, when we bought our uh, Raman confocal, we got a cold stage for uh, light microscopy, a hot stage for light microscopy. And they both conveniently fit on this, uh, in what we call an inspection microscope. Another thing that we got is for tension or for compression, that means that you can bend and break and squish things inside the SEM and get a close-up view of it if you want to. This is an um, environmental scanning electron microscope, which means it's also a regular scanning electron microscope. It has okay. a field emission gun on it. And uh, what Nate is looking at right now is um, cross-sections of nematodes. So what we're looking at here is, uh, is uh, 40 nanometer thick sections that are sitting on carbon coated slides that have been coated with gold and palladium uh, or gold, yeah, gold palladium. And uh, Nate's bringing the focus in on these so that he can relax. He's using uh, backscattered imaging in order to be able to differentiate what he's looking at. So they're really, really beautiful cross sections so this also has uh, EDS on it, so you can do elemental analysis. You can work with wet samples. You can work with frozen samples, uh, lots of different things like that. Really, really nice uh, field emission microscope. And then DPV, we got a, a Hariba Raman confocal system. So when the uh, confocal Raman system, which somebody is using right now, got this other system with deep UV. So it's a really nice system. It's also set up for fluorescence.
And then it also has a 120,000 frame per second camera just sitting up there. So this is just another space where we have critical point dryers and automated critical point dryer, regular critical point dryer, two ultra microtomes, fiber puller, micro pipe pet puller, uh, carbon evaporator just for things that we want to make conductive using carbon, and then a little toy uh, tensile stage in here that somebody gave us. So that is really most of it. Uh, right where we are now, we're in the basement of Beckman. Down the hall, you have Beck Pet CT. We're looking at live animals, and there's that's a really nice setup. It's called the Molecular Imaging Laboratory. They do some really beautiful work. And then if you come a little bit more this way, we have two uh, MRI setups that are for people. So those are right, right next to us. And across the hall, there's also uh, sound related imaging. So ultrasound, things like that. So I think we're yeah. done.